everyone, it's Christy here from KP Creatives with another video for Two Scrapbook Friends. Today we are going to be having some fun with the Simon Hurley Ranger Stamping Foam. And I have been playing with this uh, for a quite a long time today and my fingers are super inky. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, so fair warning, you will get inky when you're working with this, but it is a lot of fun and there are so many possibilities and I think you're going to really enjoy what uh, what you can do with this stamping foam. So all of the supplies we're going to use today are listed here. We'll pop this up again at the end of the video so you can take a screenshot if you would like. We have a lot going on today. So as I mentioned, we're going, the star of the show is going to be the Simon Hurley stamping foam. Uh, this is new to me. I've never used it before, but when I saw Simon uh, demoing it and showing what you could do with it, I thought, oh my goodness, I, I had a, a couple of ideas. So I wanted to show you what that resulted in today. So when you purchase the this stamping foam, you get four blocks. So they're going to last you a long time and you're going to get some great use out of them. And I think you'll be able to, to see how creative you can get with this foam today. We're also going to be using the Essentials dies, uh, the Essential Basic Label Frames dies, sorry, from Pink Fresh Studio. And we're gonna be using the Hexagon dies from that. I've done the die cutting off camera, but you'll be able to see um, that we used a couple of the different sizes of the dies on our card projects today. And we're going to be using the stamp set Fearless Joy from Gina K Designs. I love this stamp set. It also comes with the dies. We're not gonna use the dies today, but what we're going to be doing is making some back to school cards. And the sentiments that I've chosen are, may this be a year of fearless joy. So you could use happiness, wonder, you could mix and match with other stamp sets that you have. Uh, may this be the year of whatever you'd like from another stamp set. Uh, but I thought may this be a year of of fearless joy was a great message for uh, for all the little people and students uh, in in our lives. Okay, so then we're going to use a series of distress oxides, and we're not going to be using all of these on each card, but I've got a sample selection from some of the new colors that Tim Holtz has released in his latest set. So we're gonna play around with kitsch flamingo, salvaged patina, speckled egg, and the new one prize ribbon. So you'll get to see uh, some of those in action as we go through. And we're going to be using the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink for stamping the sentiment. I've got two types of paper we're using today. This piece, which we're going to use for our card panel, is the Tim Holtz Distress White Heavyweight Cardstock. It is great when you are getting really inky, if you're using water, any mixed media on your projects, this is a great heavyweight cardstock to use. So I've cut pieces down to five inches by three and three quarters. So that's gonna leave a nice half, or sorry, quarter of an inch margin on our final A2 panels. And the card panels are the Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound. So it's one piece of eight and a half by 11, cut at four and a quarter and scored at five and a half. And that's our standard A2 card size panel. So I'm gonna get these, most of these out of the way so that we can um, get playing around. I've also got some tools here, the Distress Sprayer just filled with water uh, from Tim Holtz, we'll use that. I've got some beads from, or gems from Studio Katya. These are the round iridescent gems and those are gonna add a little bling to our project. And to make sure we are stamping in the most efficient way possible, I've got the Maker Forte Smusher tool, which is a great tool to use in your Misty or whatever stamp positioning platform you have. Okay, so let's get into it. We are gonna start, as I said, with the stamping foam. Now I left this one with the pattern in it. So when you, when you take the stamping foam out of the package, it's smooth. I've used this one a few times today and I wanted to, to leave it so I could show you a couple of things as we get working on our cards. So this stamping foam, you heat it up with your heat tool and I'll show you that in a moment, um, but you, you heat it up with your heat tool and once it's, it's warmed up, then you press it into a surface and it's going to have the resulting pattern of that surface. So this pattern that you see 
on this stamping foam here. My grandmother, um, she canes chairs and I pushed this stamping foam into a chair that she made me. Um, so I just think that's so cool that I can see the pattern that she has used on a chair that she's made. And now I can take that pattern, imprint it on this foam and use it on my cards. So I really love that you can use this foam on absolutely any textured item that you have. So I'm going to show you how to use Use it in an item that you may already have in your collection and this is from make make it by Marco this is the stamp chamois case one side of it so normally you know you have your your stamp chamois all tucked away in this cool little case they come in many colors that you can get at two scrapbook friends but I thought oh this circle pattern is pretty cool and we could probably imprint that on the stamping foam so that's what we're gonna do so over the next few well the next minute or so well not quite a minute but stick with me um, I, I apologize for the heat of the heat tool but I'm gonna show you two things one I'm going to heat up this side so you'll see that the foam comes back to its regular um, smooth surface and then we'll be able to um, push the foam into this part of the case and we're going to get this pattern imprinted and you won't be able to see this one anymore. So uh, you might not believe me that it's true, but I'm going to prove it to you. So here we go. And I again, I apologize for the heat of the heat tool, uh, but you'll start to see how this all comes together. So you can already see through the heat on the foam that that pattern is starting to disappear. And the foam is starting to come back to its original shape, which is just so cool. I, I've never used foam like this before. I think it existed, it's existed for a long time, but I'm, I think it's so cool that it's getting a, a bit of a second life here. And I, I Simon's videos are just awesome. In, what he has been able to, to do with it. And some of the things he's used, just, he's used a sweater, um, I think a pillow that he had, all kinds of cool things. So you can see there's almost none of that, that pattern that I had stuck this in from the chair uh, left, which is just so cool. So as I'm getting this hot, it's getting ready to be able to take the next impression of whatever I'm going to push into here. And as I mentioned, we're gonna use that stamp chamois case and see what that will look like on the foam. So just getting it nice and warm so we'll be able to push it in really easy. And I think that's probably good. So I'm gonna turn off the heat tool Thanks for sticking with me through the noise there. And since this is nice and warm, I'm just going, I've got my stamp chamois case here. I'm going to put the foam on top and I'm gonna press. Don't be shy with the pressing. You really need to get in there with the foam because you want that pattern to show through. So I'm gonna be very careful and flip it over and just give it a press from the other side as well to try and get this as prominent as I can in the foam. And I apologize if the camera is jiggling a little bit. Okay, so. Now you can see the pattern on the foam. You can't see any of the pattern from the chair that I had imprinted earlier. Now you can only see after heating it up and pressing this one, you only see the stamp chamois imprint, which is just so, so cool. So now what we're going to do is take a couple of the Distress Oxides and have some fun with putting ink right on this stamping foam and then stamping it down onto the Tim Holtz uh, heavyweight, the Distress White heavyweight cardstock. So I'm going to start with Kitsch Flamingo. I'm going to go directly right on to the stamping foam and just 
swipe my ink pad across. Then I'm gonna come in with salvaged patina. And I'm getting, I just wanna make sure they overlap a little bit. I'm gonna be die cutting most of these down, so um, I'm not too concerned about, you know, the perfect blend or, or anything like that. It's not necessary. So I'm gonna go back in with the Kitsch Flamingo. Just pump it up a little bit. Close up those inks. And now, I've, again, I've got my piece of cardstock here and I'm gonna go right direct to paper with my stamping foam. Press and press. And there we go. So you can see how neat it is when you can take something and use that foam to get the imprint and then there you go. You have a really cool and unique background. And again, we're gonna be die cutting out of this, so I'm not too concerned. Um, you know, this section here got a little, like the ink got a little bit on the, the solid part, that's totally fine. So I also wanna show you that this still has a lot of ink left on it and you don't want to to waste that ink so one thing you can do is take your tim holtz distress sprayer spray it so you get a mist so one spray i'm not going to do it right now but one spray fully down press fully down with the nozzle so you have the water misting and just drag the foam through it so i'm going to do that a little off to the side so that it doesn't get on the lens of my camera but i'm just pressing once full down and moving the foam through it. I'm gonna do it one more time. Press down and move the foam through so that it just gets a little bit of a mist. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it just gets a little bit of the mist onto that ink. And because, as you know, the Distress Oxide inks are reactive with water, um, it just activates them a little bit more. So again, I've got another piece of this Tim Holtz Distress White Heavyweight cardstock. I'm gonna do the same thing as before. Push down and we're gonna get another impression of the stamp chamois case. And I actually like this one a little bit better. So you can see, you can get really great prints. And you know, I could probably even do one more, but we're, we're gonna move on here. So um, that's just to show you how interesting uh, the prints can be. So once you've done it once, don't be afraid to hit it again uh, with some water, just mist it up a little bit and, and away you go. So that is some really cool ways to, to use the stamping foam. To clean it off, what I like to do is take a piece of paper towel and just mist it up, fold the paper towel over, and you're going to be able to just rub that excess ink off. And you still have that imprint there, but if you wanted to take that off and use it for something else, you would just come in and hit it with that heat tool and it will turn out exactly like this side. So as I mentioned, you get four of these in a package. So you can use this side, this side, you can use the edges. If you had something really neat or really unique to, that was a tiny print, you could imprint that on the form, the foam. And I think Simon Hurley has a video where he did that and then stamped things like this down a card panel in a rainbow color. So all kinds of options for you to try out imprinting and playing around with the foam. So hopefully you guys will check that out and I would love to see what you what you end up making with that so as you saw before I used the stamp chamois as one option uh, for the imprinting on the foam and the other one I did was that pattern from the chair that uh, that my grandma made so you can see again this was the first generation stamping and I missed it with water and so you just get a little bit of that faded look um, so really cool to be able to do and if I would have uh, you know had that foam even I could have used these as card fronts on their own but but I didn't so what I have done off camera is used this basic label frames die set from Pink Fresh Studio and I have die cut a lot of 
pieces of these backgrounds out of hexagons. And I wanted to be able to place hexagons on my cards and try and, and have some matching color uh, with them. Now, part of the problem was I didn't have exact cardstock that matched the colors of ink that I used. So one thing to do if you have that problem and you come across that is with these distress oxides and, and pretty much any ink that you have, you can use your ink pads to make custom cardstock. So what I did here was I took a piece of that Tim Holtz um, heavyweight cardstock and I just went direct to paper with the prize ribbon Distress Oxide ink, then hit it with my heat tool so it dried a little faster. And now I have a fantastic piece of custom cardstock that matches exactly the piece that we stamped earlier. So that is a really great technique. I'm gonna show you really quickly um, how to, to do that if it's something you've never done before. So again, we've got the Tim Holtz cardstock here. I'm actually going to use um, some speckled egg. So we've got the speckled egg distress oxide here. Again, I'm going to just take my ink pad direct to paper. Nice heavy handed. So you get great coverage on your cardstock. I'm going to flip it over. Now the distress oxides stay quite wet. So what you want to do is have something, I'm just going to take a piece of purple tape here, just so that I can protect my fingers, because if I put my fingers right down, I'm going to get fingerprints on that card panel. So if you just use, you can use a post-it note, um, anything like that, just to protect yourself. And there we go. So speckled egg, custom cardstock. It takes seconds to do this. So if you find yourself going through your stash, you can't find the exact color of cardstock that you want, don't be afraid to make your own. It is really easy and it works really well. So I'm just taking a baby wipe to clean off that excess ink. And if you really didn't want to um, clean that off, you could have spritzed that with water that ink that was on here and put another piece of cardstock down and you would have gotten some really cool watercolor effects on your piece of cardstock. So we'll do that again in, in another video so you can see that. So again, here you go, custom cardstock right away. So cool, I, I really love to, to do that on my projects. So now we are going to build some of these projects together, these cards together. Um, again, I have, made a few pieces of the custom cardstock. So this is using the salvaged patina. And I had die cut a few hexagons out of one of the circle panels from that stamp chamois uh, that I had made earlier. So what we're going to do is stamp our sentiment first on the card panel, and then we will arrange the hexagons around it. So I'm going to grab my Misty stamping tool. And because I've been playing around here for the afternoon, I've already got my sentiment set up. So you can see, again, it's the, may this be a year of fearless joy. So that is the sentiment that we're going to go with. I'm going to put this card panel right into the corner of the Misty. And that placement looks good. I'm gonna grab the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. This is a great stamping ink for your sentiments. It's really crisp. It is a pigment ink, so you want to make sure you're giving yourself some time for that ink to dry because it is really juicy. I'm just going to close up that ink, close the door of the Misty. I'm going to bring in the Smusher tool from Maker Forte so that we get some nice, even pressure. and that looks fantastic. So no need to do another um, pass of that. That is really crisp and it looks great. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it is still a little bit wet. So you definitely wanna be careful as you're working with, um, with the pigment inks. And actually, because we're gonna be working right around it, I'm gonna bring my heat tool in. Apologies for the noise. And we're just gonna hit this quickly so that it's not gonna smudge as we're working on our final card placement. 
So you can see that this paper's popped up a little bit. Don't worry about it. It will flatten out as we, as we work on it here. So now we're going to have some fun with placement of our hexagons. So we've got a few here that were die cut out of, a, of another panel uh, that had that imprint from the Make It By Marco stamp chamois. And I think if we go, with that pattern. Uh, let's see here, I actually might bring this bigger one in. Bring the bigger one in here. Take that one off. Yeah, I think I actually like that a little bit better. And then we will add some sequins in this area uh, so that that will, uh, that will fill that piece in a little bit. And I think it's nice, it's, uh, it's always really great if you've watched any of Kathy Zilski's videos, um, when you have, when you create that visual triangle, it creates a lot of interest on your card and it's very pleasing to the eye. So we are gonna stick with, with that and we'll use these other ones on a different card. So using this foam and then die cutting from it, you can make so many cards. So if you've got something coming up, whether it's an occasion or you've got a lot of birthdays coming up or something like that, this is a great way to make a lot of cards. So you can have so much fun looking around at what you can use to imprint on your foam. Um, and then just, you know, the creativity and the options are really endless. So lots of fun to be had playing around with this. So just gonna get this last one adhered onto the card front and we're just gonna, we'll cut off the excess. Um, I'm actually gonna move this down here a little bit. Let's put the focal point down in the bottom section of this card a little bit more. Okay, that looks great. So I am just going to take my scissors and cut this because I can, oh, well, see, you know, sometimes things don't go exactly how you think they are, <laughs> how you think they will, and your adhesive wasn't quite stuck down as much as you you thought so that's okay we're just going to move that just a little bit and I'm gonna make sure it's stuck down and you know what since we had that issue I am just going to bring in the paper trimmer that will be easier and make sure uh, we don't have any more issues. So bring in the Tim Holtz paper trimmer. I love this trimmer. You get great cuts every single time. So I've got just the edge of the card panel lined up and super easy cut. So that's going to be nice and flush um, against the edge of the card panel there, which is great. That's what we wanted. So that worked <laughs> a lot better than, than the scissors. Okay, so now... I'm going to pop some pieces of foam tape on the back of this so that it will pop up a little bit to give some dimension. And then we're going to put it on our card panel and add a little bit of bling with some sequins. So I've got my foam tape here. I'm gonna do um, four strips because this panel um, was warping just a little bit and I don't want that to happen through the mail or I want the I don't want it to ruin um, the actual card base so normally I would only put three strips but because it was warping a little bit I'm going to add that extra fourth strip just for security get that foam tape down 
and we've got our card base. And again, the card base is the Nina Classic Crest Solar White in the 110 pound weight. Great heavyweight cardstock. Got all of that release paper off. And I'm going to bring in my secret weapon ruler to make sure we are getting this. Oh, you know what? This piece I actually didn't cut down. So this is gonna be super simple. We're just going to line it up exactly with the edge of the card base. I, I must have missed cutting one of these panels down, so sorry about that. But we'll get that nice and flush across all the sides, and there we go. So now we'll work on adding some of these gems from Studio Katya. I'm gonna be using the Maker Forte uh, craft pick tool. So one end of this is tacky to be able to pick up gems or sequins, and the other end is a craft pick end so you can move things around um, or do whatever you need to do with, um, with your craft pick tool. So I'm gonna grab three gems. And I think because we have a lot of space here, I can, I'll actually be okay using some of the bigger ones. And I love these iridescent gems. They, they pick up the colors of whatever you're working on underneath, which is really cool. You can use them on all different kinds of projects. And they, they always look a little bit different, which, is, which I really love. So that placement looks great. I'm gonna bring in our Lawn Fawn Liquid Glue. And this glue, similar to the Gina K liquid glue, dries clear. So it's an excellent liquid adhesive to use for things like gem placement because if any oozes out um, on uh, any sides of the gem, it's fine, it will dry clear. So one little tip is to let your glue just set for a few seconds. It becomes more tacky and it's easier to place your gems. So if you find, you know, you put your glue on your card, then you put your gem on right away and it wiggles all around, try waiting a few seconds and it will, um, it will just be a little tacky and easier for you um, to use or to place your gems, sorry. So there you go. May this be a year of fearless joy. Now, as I mentioned, I have been playing around with this stamping foam uh, today and I was able to, to crank out um, a lot of different hexagons and a lot of different custom card panels just by swiping that ink right onto um, the Tim Holtz cardstock. So here's another card panel that I did. Again, this is the salvaged patina and then stamping the sentiment with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I've got those three hexagons that we didn't use in the last card. So I think we can use those here. So we've got three there that will just sort of frame up that sentiment and then we can add some gems as well. So you can see how quickly cards come together. Again, using a little bit of custom color cardstock that you can make on your own using that stamping foam and die cutting out of it. So don't feel pressure that once you've used that stamping foam and you have an imprint of something, you don't have to use the whole thing. You can mix it up and do whatever you like. You could use it directly on a panel or you could cut it out. You could cut out, um, you know, word dies or the shadow pieces for word dies. That would look pretty cool. I'm thinking of all the things you could do for the holidays with this stamping foam pretty neat. Or for fall, as I mentioned, I think in one of Simon Hurley's videos, he did, he used the stamping foam on a sweater. So you could have some really cool um, fall cards or something for, for Thanksgiving. Um, anything like that would be pretty fun. Okay, so now we'll bring in a few more of these gems. I really like the gems from Studio Katya because you get an assortment of sizes in the pack, but also they all have a flat back, which makes it a lot easier to adhere things to your project. Um, 
let's see here. I think that's a little better. So again, bring in the Lawn Fawn liquid glue. Okay. Get these adhered to the card front. And you can see on this one on the bottom, you can see the glue has oozed out a little bit. It's totally fine because as I mentioned before, it's going to dry clear. So you do not have to worry about that at all. So let's get some foam tape on the back of this panel. If you didn't want to use foam tape or if you don't have any foam tape but you still wanted some dimension on your project, you could cut additional pieces of cardstock uh, and layer them up. You could use uh, fun foam if you have it. Um, anything like that will, uh, will do for adding dimension to your card. And one last piece here. There we go. Gosh, everything's flying around here today. <laughs> so it happens when you can make mass production of cards, uh, which I, I love. I, I really like to send cards out um, as often as I can to people for all different kinds of things to celebrate. And it's always fun when you can kind of get on a roll and make a bunch um, to be able to to send out to to the people in your life. So now this panel is cut down a little bit. So I think we've got an eighth of an inch margin. So I'm bringing in this ruler from Creative Grids, which was from my my sewing stash, but it really helps to line up card panels. So you can see I'm coming in a quarter or sorry, an eighth of an inch from the left hand side, and I'm going to line this up. Just a little sticky there. You know what? I'm actually going to put some glue on top of the adhesive. And you might say, uh, there's already adhesive there. That tape is sticky. And that is true. However, <laughs> uh, adding that liquid glue gives us a little bit of playtime. And it adds just a bit of a hydroplane so that we can make sure things are nice and straight. And when we press down, we press down with confidence. So that's why I like to have that, that liquid glue there just to, to give us a little bit of that wiggle room. So there you go. There's two cards um, right away from this, uh, from d using the stamping foam. And as I said, I've been playing around. So I've made a few more. Uh, so this is the hexagons using the pattern from my grandma's chair uh, with speckled egg custom card stock in the back. This one is using uh, the prize ribbon custom cardstock, and I cut those hexagons out using the same die from Pink Fresh, uh, and then added the sentiment right onto this hexagon here. And then this last one out of the speckled egg, and then just adding the hexagons out of prize ribbon, as well as some of the ones from the piece of stamping foam. So I hope that gives you some ideas of how to use this stamping foam from Simon Hurley and Ranger. It really is a cool product that you can use to be able to try new things and just really expand your creativity. So again, you can see what we started with from the stamp chamois case and what we ended up with. And then again, these are the ones that I did the imprint from my grandma's chair um, and then ended up die cutting out of that. So tons of options for creativity. Here is the list of supplies that we used in today's video. I really hope you will try out this stamping foam. I would love to see what you make with it because I really think it is one of these things that is a game changer uh, for, for card making and just adding a bit of personal personal flair um, to your cards no matter what you are able to use to imprint. And I should have mentioned you do not have to use Distress Oxide inks. You can use any inks that you have in your collection.
collection. Um, of course, the distress oxides and the distress inks do react with water and other inks do too. Um, so those I find are, are, the distress oxides have been good for me. I also find they wipe off fairly easily. You can see this one's getting a bit discolored, but that's fine. Um, you know, we, we don't get our tools to keep them pristine. We get them to use them, so that's totally okay. Um, but the oxides, for the most part, rub off pretty easily, especially if you spritz them with some water. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please take a moment to subscribe to the Two Scrapbook Friends YouTube channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber, and you'll also get notified when we post new videos. So I hope everyone is doing well. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up, and we will see you next time.